Alright, let's see what we got going here. This is, uh, <laughs> you ever had one of those audio projects that, you know, you were a nerd as a kid and you always had speakers all over the place? Well, these are all on their own channels. Um, these guys run the show, but there's a couple other amps stashed around, like some of the subwoofers are self-powered. Some of the ones behind the back are self-powered. Um... <coughs> I'll explain the system a little bit. Maybe you learn something, maybe you don't. Um, but let's see, what do I got? For centers, I'm running an Ankyo, a Polk, um, four of these little advents. I got my DAs aren't on center, they're on um, front, and the Ramsdells are on front surround. Uh, the duals are just subwoofers, obviously, um, as are those. <laughs> Um, and those back there, and that little ion box up there is actually just using the sub. Um, there's an Ankyo back there, Logitech, uh, with a modded amp. Sony up top up there, um, several others. But, what we've got here is 3D dimensional audio. It's not just surround, and it's a pretty complex algorithm I'm running, but it's something I'm working on because, I don't know, I just like nerding out on stuff. And that's what I'm in the process of doing again. Um, let's see, I'm running... How did I pull this off without a bunch of annoying echo? Okay, first off, I'm not running Dolby anything. Um, my backbone carrier is a combination of ASIO on Windows. Um, I'm using Pulse on Linux, of course. Pulse and also in combination. Um, on, let's see. The Sony over there is fed from an Asus Zonar HDAV 1.3 Deluxe. Now, its only purpose is to convert my DTS backbone, which is how I carry my timing back to and through ASIO. Um, that card's only purpose is to keep the timing and convert to a straight multi-channel PCM signal for that Sony over there. The Danon on the bottom is just hooked up on pass-through RCAs, you know, like you would directly connect a um, Blu-ray player on all eight channels in the back. Only I'm only using five of them. The rest are shut off in the menus, so I don't burn up my finals. Um, Denons are famous for that. If you leave channels open with no speakers hooked up, sooner or later those little relays fail that would normally protect them and shut them off, and you end up replacing relays, or worse, replacing finals. Um, Okay, so that covers the Danon, and he's fed from the subwoofer ports on those guys. And then he goes out to a distribution amp for the rest of the subwoofers, um, except for a couple of his output channels are used for the JBL down below, but they're on a loopback, so that doesn't really count. Uh, the Ankh on the bottom is running on spdiff slash toss link and that's coming out of a creative labs um sp1270 one of the thx sound cards that were i don't know they were popular for a while they sound really good they sound i think a lot better than the newer say anything creative z series um but, you know, hey, they were THX certified, and mine has the op amp swapped out for better ones. Uh, the two onks up top are running off of DisplayPort right out of an NVIDIA video card. DisplayPort to HDMI to a distribution amp um, that does not copy EDIDs. It actually sees them as two separate units. Um, and that's really hard to find. If you're going to use splitters, usually you have to copy the ADID of the wimpiest one or your timings are not going to be right. You're going to have an annoying echo and that's most noticeable like if you try and mix a 5.1 
with anything higher like a 7.1 or a 9.2 whatever um, that's when you notice it the um, sapphire is my pre-feeder but he feeds out to um, SP diff dumping into the H dab because that was the only way that I could get that to come across right on my timing. Again, like I say, I'm carrying my timing on DTS because I don't want to deal with word clocks. I'm trying to keep this entire project simple enough that anyone could duplicate it and have 3D audio, and the algorithm will be on my SourceForge page eventually. But right now, it's nowhere near perfect in fact it's completely messed up sort of um, and let's see basically if I were to do this on a poor man's budget um, like if I just wanted to stack say three receivers on one machine or uh, I don't deal with Blu-ray players and shit like that. I know how to hook them up, but I really don't care for them. I'm a computer guy. I feed it to my computer. I pass it out of my computer, and I get a lot better sounding audio than normal. Um, but if I was a poor man, college student, whatever, and I wanted to do spatial audio to a limited degree without having to learn a lot of math, um, and I have experimented with this in the background. What I would do coming off the computer, I'd use something like a little baby Intel Nook or something, something that natively has HDMI with CEC control, because that just makes life easy. And there are a couple of ATI video cards that have that too. Oh yeah, the power supply up there is because I have fans hidden, well, they're in plain sight, that one is. Um, but there's a bunch of them up there um, and that's for cooling purposes because this is a small room um, that guy is not hooked up he's waiting on parts this guy I can't find I need a set of finals for it and she needs recapping um, I cleaned up all the pots and she has major issues with the finals but I can't find those finals anywhere because you can't get them through customs and nobody in America makes them. Um, let's see. Yeah, that Harman Kardon there. That would be a good example if you were going to go out on optical. Feed that optical and then feed out. I think that one's only got... No, that one's got eight channels out. It's got eight in and eight out. Um... So, you know, you go in on optical to, say, the Sony, and then just feed direct RCA to the um, Harman Kardon. And then for your secondary, stack it behind the Sony. Um, or you can stack Onkyos, but Onkyos you generally got to stay within the same year or two of each other or they just don't carry their timing right. There's always that little extra latency, that echo to the voices that's annoying. I mean, you'd think Onkyo would have gotten that right by now. They have it right with their Integra line. I don't know why they've not done it with their regular retail Onkyo branded line. I love the Integras by the way. I have a couple. Um, now I've got a couple of uh, tech woods laying around that are just plain vintage cool pieces. Um, but that's all. Now another way that you could do something like, and that, that would give you a reasonable spatial audio, but you would put your higher pitched amp, which isn't in this pile. That Sony's beautiful for mid-range and it has plenty of bottom end feeding out of the LFE port, subwoofer port. Um, feeding out of both of them. The um, Harman Kardon would be a middle um, your voices are going to be accentuated through there. 
and <clears throat> well, it's screen. Oh yeah, I don't have anything on it. And then you'd have a amp that's higher pitched up top. Now my thing, um, as far as uh, a stack like that goes, is I would handle. It would only give you not real true spatial audio but it would at least give you 7.1 at three levels and if you're smart and tune your speakers put your boomers on your sony put your full ranges on your harman kardon because it's going to handle those the best and it has excellent mid-range um, and then whatever you had for a high-pitched squeaky amp that you stacked behind the sony on hdmi um, I actually DG1100, DG1000, DG800 right in the Sony family if you could find two 800s and a 1000 or an 1100 just stack them together um, I wouldn't do two 800s I would definitely stick with say a 1000 as a head unit controlling and an 1100, two 1100s behind it um, because the 1100s as a control amp in that scenario absolutely suck dog shit. Um, but the 1000s are really good at controlling other receivers. Um, even mixed brands. And as you can see, yeah, I'm a big, big THX freak. I got THX stuff. That guy's THX. Uh, the big JVC's THX. Um... The companion JVC was Dynamic Super A, which was somehow Lucasfilms was involved in that too. Um, yeah, that's by the way where THX came from is Lucasfilms. I've been studying THX pretty much for a while now. Um, because, you know, THX and IMAX kind of go together. And my main card between the other two cards in that computer is an audio, is a pair of audio science um, ASI 24 somethings that are stuffed together with a genuine IMAX audio encoder between them and that came out of a theater somewhere in a former Soviet bloc country but it's mine I own it legitimately and it came through customs legit I'm good um, and it kept all the paperwork because uh, I've had problems getting sound cards like an Onkyo SE300 PCIe. You can't get one in the United States. Um, you can get them in Russia and Japan all day long, but you cannot get one in the United States. And I would marry someone's fat, ugly sister for one. Well, all right, she'd have to use them date rape drugs on me like beer and weed, though. I mean, you know, we're talking fat, right? Um, let's see. Uh... But there's multiple ways that you could do that, and I should probably illustrate what I mean about passing through on the RCA jacks because the curiosity is killing me back here. Killing me here. Um, let's see. Can I zoom that shit without having to crawl back there? No, I can't. Hold on, I'm going to turn them. I don't move so good, so i got to put this down. Okay, so now we've got a better view. Um, and I mean, an easy stack would be just find receivers that have um, SP diff in and out and then feed them. Um, like this Herman Carden, she will, as long as you're doing DTS, she'll spit out optical and she'll spit out coax at the same time. So feed one sub receiver coax, feed the other one optical. Um, and hope like hell that the processors are all about the same speed, but if they're on DTS, DTS carries its own timing signal, so you'd go optical in, blah, blah. Um, and let's see. Yeah, direct in right there. All eight channels. Six channel or eight channel. So you get your front left, you could, you could go into this one from anything with 
I know that this one has it. Yeah, there's the pre-out section. So you could actually pass right through this one on RCA. Um, uh, what about this thing? This, oh, hell, this one was only 5.1. What the hell is it still doing here? Um, it's optical in 5.1. I thought I got rid of all those. I got uh, mostly HDMI 5.1, and I've got a couple of Firewire 5.1 pieces. I keep that Pioneer over there. He's really my only exception. I keep that one for my 5.1 test because it's got a horribly slow processor. And uh, like I think I mentioned earlier, when you mix 5.1 with Seven point with anything higher than five point one, even six point one. Yes, I've got it. I've had a Techwood six point one. I gave that to one of our local former science teachers. Hold on, I'm going to turn these back around. A uh, couple of those guys have HDMI, but I'm not doing good enough to move this. Shit. <clears throat> And so far, I'm probably not being very much help to anyone, but I'm hoping to be. And like I say, DTS for the poor man, it's the best carrier because it's automatically got a timing signal. And you don't have to worry about learning about word clock and various other um, clock functions. Like, I've got my cards tied together um, from their clocks. So this one is an exception. He's tied on the firewire bus and his timing to the other cards is only on DTS. Um, all their timing is pretty much controlled by DTS. Um, and yes, by the way, you can light up seven channels through DTS. DTS on optical will carry eight channels. What they do is they down convert it to the lossy format and then put the extra packets in there. Big deal. Um, it's pretty easy. And it's like, psh, what, 200 lines of code. Um, but it's one of the handiest tools for the poor man that wants to stack and create a spatial audio effect and keep, you know, every speaker on its own channel. And like I say, though, if you pull the poor man's trick like that, um, you do want to put your boomers at the bottom, your kind of tinny mid-rangey ones, or full range in the middle physical level. Uh, yeah, okay, there's a couple on the middle, middle physical level. And ceiling-wise, uppers. Oh, wow. <laughs> this camera, I just fixed this camera. It's uh, old, uh, what is this? this? Is a Casio. Um, I just fixed this camera, but it's having focus problems still. I mean, that is fucking slow. Cool. I love it. Uh, but, um,. Your upper, you want a tinny crappy amp, or you want a really nice amp that's going to handle your highs well, but um, you want to match your speakers to what your receivers, your amps are capable of. And I do know uh, several guys who just put stacks of stereo amps um, behind their um, receivers and run multiple physical levels off of stacks of literally stereo amps with all the cut with all the effects cut off um, don't know why don't care why I just think it's hilarious and what else do we have that covers it pretty much um, stacking HDMI I should mention that if you're gonna play with HDMI distribution amps you know, yeah, you want something classy, but avoid the boutique shops like Crestron because you're going to be stuck with, you can't get their damn software unless you go through a dealer. And they want to come out and mess with your stuff. And people like me, you know, we're just experimenting in the shed. I'm not going to pay some guy 500 bucks every time I want to, you know, I should have got the software with the fucking thing. Sorry. <laughs> That's my opinion, though. And, uh, 
it won't change but you you have to be careful when you're picking out um, a distribution amp that does not copy EDID and actually splits your receivers uh, and that's because there are too many of the better distribution amps are proprietary um, software behind them that they just don't want to give up I mean you know they think it's the 90s and you can't go down the street and just hack a box you know what I'm saying but you can <laughs> not with a splitter but with some of the cheaper distribution amps you can get in there and play with the firmware and you can make them not copy EDID um, and a lot of the really good ones like the studio ones they'll pass through copy protected content no problem but I'm not interested in copying music I play the shit on YouTube and you know I like the spatial audio um, because I got bored with I mean y'all remember when I had uh, the cycle shop or the marina or the hangar you remember when I had the warehouse some of you don't haven't been following that long because um, a lot of that shit that I just mentioned was in <laughs> the MySpace and the news group days but a lot of it was fairly recent um, you remember I've always had some kind of a sound wall or stereo system and when I finally retired um, I decided that uh, it was time to really make something crazy and this is it I've got about two years just in the algorithm behind running my show and I'm not doing anything impressive I'm basically taking pieces and parts from everybody else's work and putting it together out of pure personal curiosity um, it's something to do it keeps me out of trouble you know and normally I mean, for the longest time I fixed up computers and I still do I fix up computers and give them to vets there's one laying right there that <clears throat> can go away um, in fact it's actually in my way because it makes my focus rate block the bottom of that screen because I like to sit low like I am right now <laughs> um, but uh, oh and by the way if you're local to Venice Florida and I don't have to drive to get to you any of these older units are up for trade I'm interested in firewire um, mixers signal processors um, random PA gear I don't give a shit what I'm just you know I'm pretty much more interested in playing with stuff that I haven't played with before so you know the value of it doesn't matter um, quite a few little miscellaneous speakers laying around like those um, Panasonic towers aren't even hooked up to anything they're actually um, whoever put them together the first time didn't put the rubber gasket between them that's the only thing wrong with them um, and they seem to be still pretty expensive on eBay they were over 50 bucks a piece um, and I found that just looking for the rubber gaskets which were four bucks on eBay and they're on their way a uh, bunch of little random Onkyo and JBL commercial industrial speakers that I just not really a fan of not that they're too crispy it's that I'm in too small of a room and they're too efficient and I'm trying to keep the sound pressure down to something that won't destroy my eardrums because I do have a little bit of a brain left uh, marijuana hasn't messed me up completely <laughs> but uh, anyway let's see that's about that's about all there is really for this adventure I hope I gave somebody some helpful tips on spatial audio but I kind of am doubting it um, but at the same time you know hey you know how to pop by the house fuck it I'll sit down with you and write it out just bring a fat one I mean a joint not a, not a girl hell fat girl got to bring the joint and the beer I don't drink anymore <laughs> so that weed better be powerful <laughs> but, 
uh, oh yeah, and just as a drool toy. And to demonstrate that these are not the Chinese knockoffs, these are the real brand, original club speakers, before the Chinese knockoff company made the messed up crazy aluminum cone crappy ones. These are real titanium cone, very hard to find. Um, and there's a lot of these that are floating around that were faked. The originals were 17 grand a piece. These are originals. And they were intended for clubs and stuff. And then, much like uh, several other companies in the late 90s and early 00s, a Chinese company started making white van knockoffs and a bunch of scam artists in New Dork and New Jerky um, were selling white van knockoffs pretending they were the real thing and I mean they didn't even use real wood in them things they used particle board and shit these are real actual wood I mean nice cherry too but uh, so you know there is a difference and there's a lot of um what was that one brand i used to love back in the 70s um wasn't boomer but there's a it, there's several com chinese companies that have taken un disused or no longer used american company names and made clones of their old products because Whoever was dumb enough not to patent or copyright the shit or whatever. I don't think you can patent a speaker unless you're making the cones. Um, and like I said, the Chinese knockoffs of those DAs are aluminum cone. They're not even titanium. They're titanium nitride coated aluminum. These are real titanium cones. I can literally shoot at the things. I'm not going to put a hole in them. And they're pretty thin titanium, but very strong alloy. I like that. Um, and they actually came from a titty bar. Um, not so local, but here in Florida. Uh, the Ramsdells, I love those. Um, and let's take a trip down memory lane here. I uh, did not like the original Ramsdell woofers in those, so those have Electro Voice in them. Um, the Radio Shack Mach 1s, um, I aired those a couple of months ago when I first got them. I mean, you know, this is, those are nerd pornography first generation Radio Shack Mach 1s. Well, unfortunately, they've got Celestions for them now instead of original Radio Shack woofers. But I do like the sound of the Celestions better in a small space like this. My beef with finding a original set of woofies is you can't. Uh, the DOS is just big and beautiful and sounds crystal clear. Um, no mods other than the compression driver in that. Damn near everything in this room, I've ripped out the piezos and put in um, compression drivers. Uh, there's 32 compression horns each with their own amp back behind that those are controlled directly from my fancy sound card um, from the audio science portion um, and there's uh, the hell did I put the lid to my weed I ain't got no lid now <laughs> but uh And I'm not crawling back there, but they're back there. Um, and there's a subwoofer back under there, under the table back there, because I didn't have room anywhere else. That onk subwoofer is going to go up here instead. It's a little bit too much boom coming out of the back. Um, and this JBL, I always kind of leave turned down anyway, so that should be a good thing. The Jensen's, I haven't done anything. Um, the Tweets Silk Dome are in beautiful shape. The Woofies are in good shape. I protected them with covers. Um, the mid-ranges I cannot find and I've bought four or five sets of compression drivers 
with horns for them. Um, and I bought four or five sets of loose horns and I haven't found anything that fits in there um, nicely. I want it to be a perfect match to that ring shape of the originals. But that might take me a while to find. Because they're not ball size, they're four and a quarter instead of four. Um, Radio Shack's got new compression drivers in the mid. Tweets were fine, left them alone. The bows, I've done the spatial mod, you know, flipping them, flipping the end caps around on the mid-range end. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't really create point source audio, but it does create a nice spread. Um, I don't think there's any other real mods made to this system. But like I say, it's all tailored to where I can have it set for spatial audio to where the footsteps come from down there and they go across there. The helicopters come from up there. The voices come from mid-level. Or I've got um, another algorithm that was actually written by a guy in Poland. Um, and he put it up. He was asking people to help him work on it, so I helped him work on it a little bit, and so did a million other people, so I ain't special. Um, but his algorithm allows me... My crazy IMAX card will calibrate as it goes through each speaker. It figures out what each speaker is capable of and where it's physically at in the room. And... Uh, it will, I have an algorithm written by the Polish guy that will direct, like, say, the drums are going to cut, the bass drums are going to come from the woofies, the snare drums are going to come from the, you know, and they're going to come from those guys, probably. Um, voices, um, voices, tweet, tweet. And then, strangely, those Harman Kardon speakers on the side there, um, they're really close to full range sounding, even though they're tiny. I, they claim to drop off at like 60 or 70 hertz, but I can reproduce sound out of them till cows come home. But anyway, that particular algorithm in multi-channel systems like this where each channel is individually controlled it will shoot out you know the clarinets are going to come only from speakers that are capable of doing the full clarinet range the drums are going to come from the speakers that best do the drums range and it may be a combination of speakers according to which type of drum and so on and so forth the guitars will come from the speakers that can best handle their frequency range so that gives kind of a spatial effect that may not match the band on the screen, but if you close your eyes, it's coming from all around you in different directions, and each of the instruments seem to maintain a static position during the entire playing. Um, and I'm not some asshole that's going to sit here and play this on a cheap built-in camera mic that's not going to reproduce it. You know, some kid out on the other end on an iPhone is not going to hear the clarity by any means it's <laughs> yeah, ludicrous to think that they could so I don't do that crap but anyway this is my latest project and I'll probably I've been meaning to do electronic videos and I've kind of half ass started and I gotta do this shit without um, without involving math and I've got to get some visual aids in here like a bunch of cables that I don't have or normally use because um, I think I'm going to carry the audio experiment into shit you can do at home without blowing shit up um, you know without catching your speaker coils on fire you know what I mean <clears throat> well I hope you do anyway but uh all right, I'm going to smoke me a bowl and listen to some redneck music. We'll holler at y'all later.